kids, welcome back to Cool School. You kids know I love reading. It's kind of my thing. So today we're going to read Rapunzel. If you want to learn how to read or love reading as much as I do, click right here to download our reading app. Once upon a time, there was a man and woman who were very much in love. Let's just call them Tom and Sally. Sally was going to have a little baby. They were so happy, but also nervous because they didn't have very much money. How are we going to afford all that baby stuff? Diapers and bottles and pacifiers and baby books and baby toys and baby blankets and baby bouncers. Calm down, you worry too much. Everything's gonna be fine. No, not fine. Look, we don't have enough room for a baby. And don't even get me started on Dame Gothel. Did I forget to mention that they lived in a teeny tiny hovel rented from Dame Gothel? Yes. That Dame Gothel, the witch. No one knew for sure if she was a witch, but she wore very witchy looking clothes and had a very witchy laugh. <laughs> so yeah, Tom was right. Her backyard wasn't exactly the best place to raise a baby. One night, Sally awoke with the most peculiar craving. I'm hungry. I could go for some Rapunzel flour. What? You know. Those little weeds that taste like spinach? I want some. Where am I supposed to get Rapunzel at three in the morning? Dame Gothel has a growing in her garden. She'll put a curse on me if I steal her Rapunzel. Oh shush, she'll understand. And so that's how Tom found himself creeping around in the witch's garden at three in the morning filling up a basket with Rapunzel flowers. He had just pulled up the last weed when... <laughs> Him, just what do you think you're doing? Uh. Borrowing? No, you're stealing! I didn't mean to, I promise! My wife was just hungry. She's having a baby. A baby? Yes. Do you like babies? I love babies! I'll make a deal with you. I won't send you to prison if you let me take care of your baby. Like, babysit? Uh, okay. Sure, like Babysitting. <laughs> Dame Gothel cackled her witchy laugh, but Tom didn't get what was so darn funny. Uh, okay. Thanks. No, thank you. Okay, see you around. When their baby girl was born two days later, Tom had completely forgotten about his deal with Dame Gothel, but she did not. I'm here to take my baby. What? Me and him made a deal. I think I'll call her... Rapunzel. And with a puff of smoke, the witch disappeared, taking the baby with her. Uh, Our baby! Oh no! Stop her! Tom and Sally were beyond freaked out. They called the police and formed a search party, but no one could find Dame Gothel and baby Rapunzel. It was like they had disappeared into thin air. But of course they hadn't just disappeared. You know this part of the story. They were in a tower deep in the woods. Here's what you might not know about this fairy tale. Dame Gothel wasn't entirely witchy. She actually tried very hard to be a nice mommy to the new baby. She gave her the best baby toys. She sang her the sweetest lullabies. rock a baby on the treetop. Well, she tried. Dame Gothel even tried to make silly faces to get Rapunzel to laugh. But baby Rapunzel must have known that this wasn't her real mommy, so she pretty much never stopped crying. The only thing that could calm her down was when Dame Gothel brushed baby Rapunzel's hair. Oh, thank goodness, finally! Dame Gothel spent so much time doing Rapunzel's hair that she got really good at it and eventually tried out pretty much every hairstyle there is. And Dame Gothel didn't dare cut Rapunzel's beautiful hair. So over the years, it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. By the time Rapunzel was a young lady, it was like world record length. Hey, Dame Gothel, you think I could enter a hair competition or something? I bet I could win a big prize. You know very well that you can't leave the tower. Hmm. <sighs> Right, there was that about Dame Gothel. She wouldn't let Rapunzel leave the tower, not even on a super nice sunny day. Maybe one day. I heard that you're not going anywhere. Yeah, but one day I'll get out. She'll see. Heard that too. Let's talk about what it's like growing up in a tower away from all civilization. It can get pretty lonely and very, very boring. Here are the things Rapunzel did to keep herself entertained all those years. I learned to knit. I read every single book in the tower library at least three times. 
I learned to cook international cuisine. Come on and get it, spaghetti taco sushi. I taught myself different languages. Hola. Aloha. Konnichiwa. Buongiorno. Alo. I learned to dance. Ballet. Tap. Salsa. And hip hop. I gave myself piano lessons. I counted all my hairs. 1,341, 1,342, 1,343, 1,343. I wrote jokes. What's in one wall? Say to the other wall. I'll meet you at the corner. <laughs> I studied the effects of boredom on mice. Day 453, Sir Squeakly ignores his cheese. I made jewelry. I learned to meditate. Oh. Then one day there was a knock at the door. Huh? Who, who could that be? Dame Gothel never knocks. Yo, hello. I'm selling craft boxes. Do you want to buy one? Craft boxes? Yeah, they'll keep you entertained for hours. That sounds awesome. Come on up. Well, hi there. I'm Crafty Carolina. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Crafty Carolina. I'm Rapunzel. Oh, that's nice. Do you live up here all by yourself? Well, my mother, Dame Gothel, lives here too sometimes. But now that I'm old enough, I stay here alone a lot. Oh, you really shouldn't give so much information to strangers, dear. Oh, well, I never met a stranger before. <laughs> well, that's odd. Anyway, may I show you my crafting wares? Check that out. It's crafting box. Cool! I'll take two. One for me and one for Dame Gothel. Oh, well, score. All right, I'll sign you up for two. Uh, you got money? Money? Yeah, you know, that you buy stuff with. Uh, no, I, I don't, but I'll trade you. How about this giant sweater? Kind of warm out. Oh, well. How about this DIY jewelry? It's nice, but... Not really your style? Not really. Okay, well, why don't you just hang out till Dame Gothel gets here and she'll pay you. Okay! So Rapunzel and Carolina spent the rest of the day making crafts. arms. Finally, Dame Gothel arrived, but she was very jealous and didn't want to share Rapunzel with anyone, so she was not exactly happy to find Crafty Carolina there. Get out of this tower! But she's nice, and she's selling these super cool craft boxes. This is what I think of craft boxes. Hey, that's not nice. You're next. Ooh, oh. All right, gotta go. You are so mean. She could have been my very first friend ever. You don't need friends, you have me. Yeah, you're like a great friend. That's it, you're grounded. Grounded? But I'm not allowed to leave anyway. Well now I'm boarding up the door so no one can ever come here again. But how are you gonna get in? Oh, right, I know. I'll call Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair and you'll throw your hair out the window and I'll climb up it. Really? It's a good plan. And so Dame Gothel closed up the tower so that no one could ever visit Rapunzel ever again. Rapunzel was sad. She had always been alone, so she never knew what it might be like to have a friend. Now that Rapunzel knew, she felt extra lonely. It was taking some serious getting used to pulling Dame Gothel up the tower with her hair. Ow! Ow! Oh, take it easy! Rapunzel took to singing lonely songs, belting them from the tower window. Lonely, I am so lonely. I ain't got nobody to be up in the tower with me. All by my lonesome. All these years I'm alone, all these years I'm alone. Oh. 
la 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 so lonely enough we get it it was quite the show one day Rapunzel was doing her usual, singing sad ballads from the tower window, when two brothers, princes, heard her voice in the forest. Halt! What's that? A sick animal crying for help? No, it's an angel. Uh, okay. I must find her! You're on your own, dude. I'm going back to the palace. Peace. The first prince set off to find the source of the singing. But the forest was echoey, and at every turn it sounded like the singing was coming from a different location. It was like he was going in circles. But then, just before nightfall, he found her. <gasps> She's beautiful. The prince, who was named Prince Edward, by the way, returned every day for a whole month. He would just sit and listen, silently applauding at the end of each song so as to not be noticed. At home, his brother Brad teased him. How's your girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend. You totally like her. Edward has a crush. No, I don't. <sighs> Whatever, dude. Well, maybe I do. And one day I'll talk to her and we'll fall in love and then I'll ask her to marry me and be my queen. This got Brad's attention. You see, Prince Edward was next in line to be crowned king, but there was one catch. He had to be married. Prince Brad had always assumed this would never happen and that he would become king. He already had a girlfriend. Princess will agree, so marriage would be no problem. Edward's way too shy. He'll never even talk to the tower girl. I'll marry Ogret before dad retires, and then I'll be king. The next day, Prince Edward set up his usual spot and listened to the sweet sounds of Rapunzel singing. Are you there? <sighs> Are you anywhere? Then suddenly, the singing stopped. What? No. Keep singing forever. I wonder who that could be. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel, is that the name of the lovely songstress? I love it. Then the prince watched in awe as Rapunzel dropped her golden braid down the side of the tower. That little old lady is climbing her hair like a rope. How strange. The prince waited and watched the tower window until again the braid dropped down and Dame Gothel climbed to the ground and hobbled away. Prince Edward waited to be super extra sure Dame Gothel was gone. Then he approached the tower. He cleared his throat and called up in his best witch voice. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Huh? Again? I wonder what she wants now. Oh! Sorry, I must be heavier than a little old woman. Who are you? I'm Prince Edward. A pleasure to meet you, my lady. A prince? Really? That's so cool. <laughs> May I come in? Oh, I'm afraid not. I'm not allowed to have any visitors. Oh, really? That's a bummer. May I use your hair to climb back down? No, it'll hurt you. Never mind. I'll just jump. No, don't jump. You'll hurt yourself. You can use my hair. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to go. I waited an awfully long time to talk to you. You have? <laughs> yes, every day I sat down and listened to you sing, dreaming of the day I would finally meet you. Really? I mean, I guess I am a pretty good singer, so... The best! I wish you could stay too, but I'll get in so much trouble if Dame Gothel finds you here. How about this? I'll climb that tree, and we could talk from there. That way, we're really not breaking the rule, are we? Brilliant! So Prince Edward climbed down Rapunzel's hair, and then back up the nearest tree. So your name's Rapunzel, huh? Nice to meet you. And it's nice to meet you, Prince Edward. Prince Edward returned every day to the same spot to talk to Rapunzel. They talked about everything under the sun, like, what's it like being a prince? It's pretty cool, I guess. Sometimes the crown makes my head a little itchy. What's it like being locked away in a tower? It's okay, I guess. Sometimes I wish I had a pet. A nice cat or a dog. I've read lots of books about dogs, and they seem super nice. They are. Row, and sang row, songs row, together. Boat gently row, down the stream. Uh, Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. They even played catch. <laughs> Sorry! Um, okay. Finally, one day the prince realized something major. He was definitely, most assuredly, in love with Rapunzel. He couldn't hold it in a second. Rapunzel, will you marry me? Good thing for Eddie, Rapunzel felt the same way and said, yes! Awesome! But wait, I can't. I'm not even allowed to talk to you, much less marry you. The prince was stunned. Surely your mom wants you to be happy. Well... What? 
I don't think she's my real mom. Really? I think she took me from my real parents. I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes I think I can remember my real mom. Well, then that settles it. We're busting you out of here. We'll find your real parents, and then we'll be married. Okay, but not now. Dame Gothel will be here any minute. I'll come back for you tomorrow. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And hurry, my feet hurt. Back at the palace, Prince Edward couldn't contain his excitement. I'm getting married, I'm getting married. But I'm Prince Brad heard married, Edward's song, I'm and that's not good, married, kids. Remember, I'm Brad wanted to be king, and their dad was retiring his crown in just one month. If Edward marries that girl, then he gets to be king. I have to stop this. Prince Brad jumped on his horse and rushed to the tower. He arrived just in time to see Dame Gothel climbing down Rapunzel's hair. That must be your mother. I'll just have a little chat with her. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. What do you want? Pardon me, but I thought you might like to know that a rapscallion of the lowliest order is plotting to abscond with your fair daughter. A what is doing what now? A bad guy is going to take your daughter. What? Never. Wait, how do you know? Prince Brad told her everything, including the fact that Rapunzel had been meeting with Edward every day for months. Dean Gothel was livid. That means very, 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 very angry. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. What's wrong? You know what's wrong. You were planning to leave me after everything I've done for you. Well, don't be mad. I just want to marry the prince. Is that so bad? If you want to go, then go. But first, I'm cutting your hair. What? No! Why? I love my hair! <laughs> but there was no arguing with Dame Gothel. She cut off Rapunzel's long locks and kicked her out into the cold, dark night. Rapunzel wandered the forest, hoping that somehow she would find Prince Edward. But she had never left the tower in her life. She didn't know where to go. Eventually, she found a hollow in a tree and curled up inside to sleep. I guess this is kind of like my tower. The next day, Prince Edward awoke, eager to see Rapunzel. He sang his song again. I'm getting married, I'm getting married. He sang and whistled all the way to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let that hair down. I'm coming up. The braid dropped and he climbed up. We're getting married, we're getting married. Ah! You were coming to take my Rapunzel, weren't you? Where is she? She's gone. You're my prisoner now. And just to be sure you don't get out, I'm tying you up! <laughs> Dame Gothel left the prince tied and locked up in the tower. Earlier it had been the happiest day of his life. Now it was the saddest. Back in the forest, Rapunzel was desperately trying to find her way back to the tower. Edward will be getting to the tower any minute now. If I can just find my way back, we can run away together. But it was no use. Rapunzel's sense of direction was limited to going in circles in the tower. Word. She didn't know where she was going or what she was doing, but she was not going to give up. Edward! Meanwhile, in the tower, Prince Edward was calling out for her too. Rapunzel! Edward! Rapunzel! Edward! You get the idea. Poor Rapunzel had been wandering the forest for days. She had learned to survive by watching animals. First, the squirrels. Hmm, okay. They eat the little nut thingies that fall off the tree. Okay. <laughs> Blech. Nope. Then she looked to the birds. Hey, haven't you heard of sharing? <laughs> Finally, she saw a deer munching on an apple. Hmm, I can do that. Mmm, delicious. The apples gave her new energy and she set off again determined to find Prince Edward. She walked and walked and walked and walked. And then, rather suddenly, she found herself in a whole new world. People! Hey, people! <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Cheese Emporium. Wow, so much cheese. Mm. <laughs> Tommy's Toys and Trinkets, awesome. <gasps> Betty Baldy's Beauty Parlor. <gasps> hey, maybe she can fix my hair. Hi, are you Betty Baldy? Sure am. Hi, Um, 
So my mother, well, I don't know if she's really my mother, <laughs> long story, but anyway, this woman cut my hair off and I was hoping that you could do something with it. Well, sure, honey. Sit down, let me fix you up. The side pony. Pigtails. Beehive. How's that? Love it. You got a big date or something? Well, <laughs> I'm supposed to marry this prince, but now I can't find him anywhere. It's like he disappeared. Oh, story of my life, honey. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Gotta go. <laughs> you gotta pay first. Oh, right. Money. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, so I don't have any of that, but I can work. So Rapunzel agreed to be the hair sweeper upper for the rest of the day. She was busy at work when she saw a familiar face coming in the door. Dame Goggle. And she's wearing my hair. It was true, kids. Dame Goggle seemed to have taken Rapunzel's blonde braid and fashioned it to a wig of her own. You got some hair. It's all natural, too. Yeah, right. You say something? Me? Nothing. Anyway, I need a very special hairdo. I'm going to a ball at the palace tonight. A ball at the palace? How fancy. It's an engagement party for the prince. Rapunzel's jaw dropped. Engagement party? The prince? My prince? What? And wait a second. Why is Dame Gothel going? Something's not right about this. Rapunzel decided that she had better follow Dame Gothel to the party. Uh, hey, I'm, um, I'm on the list. Yeah, OK, see ya. Now, where's Edward? I have to find him. Edward's not here. Who are you? I'm Prince Brad. But when I get married tomorrow, I'm going to be King Brad. The brother. And who are you? I'm, um, uh, what's that? Oh, OK. Coming. I have to go. Talk to you later, OK? <laughs> Wait, I recognize you. You're that girl from the tower. Rapunzel tried to rush out of the palace, but she somehow got caught in a conga line. Edward is supposed to be king, not Brad. Something is seriously wrong here. I bet that old stinker Dame Gothel has something to do with this. Oh, I gotta get out of here and find Edward. <laughs> Finally, I thought we were gonna conga forever. Okay, how do I get out of here? Food! Oh my gosh, delicious! Then Rapunzel heard Dame Gothel's voice. Don't worry, Edward's locked away. He'll never get out! <laughs> but I saw the girl from the tower. What's her name? Cozumel? It's Rapunzel, and I'm telling you there's no way you saw her. She's lost deep in the woods. There she is now! Get her! Ah, gotta go! Rapunzel tried to run away, but once more got trapped on the dance floor. This time, it was a limbo contest. Ah! Too low! I'll get you! Rapunzel finally found the door and ran away from the ball. Okay, so Dame Gothel has Edward locked away somewhere. Like, in jail? But he would never commit a crime. Wait, so obvious, Rapunzel. He's in the tower, but I don't know how to get to the tower. I looked and looked and looked before, but it was no use. What if I go back into the woods and get lost forever? Oh! Rapunzel didn't know what to do. She was just about to break down in tears when another familiar face appeared. Well, you look like someone who could use some cheering up. And you know what I do to cheer up? I craft. Crafting Carolina, hi! Do I know you? I'm Rapunzel, the girl from the tower. Oh, you changed your hair. I like it. Oh, that mean woman from the tower isn't here, is she? Dame Gothel? No, thank goodness. Wait a second, I thought you never left your tower. She kicked me out just because I fell in love. Well, that's not nice. Tell me about it. And now she's got my prince locked in a tower. And I don't know how to find my way back to rescue him. I'll never see him again. Well, wait a second. I know how to get to the tower. It's on my sales route, remember? Oh, yeah. Can you take me there? Well, sure. But we can't go now because it's dark out. And I don't mind telling you, I'm a little bit afraid of the dark. It's one thing, you know, when you're in town, but do not get me started on the woods after dark. It's so scary, the wind howling in the trees, weird noises like <coughs> Ow! <coughs> I'm sorry, did I scare you? Well, I just thought about the poor Prince Edward. 
locked away in the dark tower. He's probably scared and lonely. <sighs> okay, let's go. What? We're gonna go rescue Edward. Really? Now? Well, we gotta get some supplies first, but yeah, we can be brave. Yeah. Let's go save that prince. Yay. After Crafty and Rapunzel stocked up on all the important stuff, crafting supplies and snacks, the two set off into the woods to find the tower. They were only a little bit scared. <laughs> be brave. Right, okay. <laughs> what? We got this. Be brave. Right, brave, very brave, not scared. <laughs> That's it, I'm going back. No, no, we got this far. There's nothing here in the dark that isn't here in the daytime too. But what about animals that sleep during the day and come out at night like bats? Bats are scary. Oh yeah, but you said we'd be brave, so let's be brave. Wait, what was that? What? Shh. Oh yeah, I definitely hear something. Hide. Huh. Oh no, not her. She must have suspected I would come out to rescue Edward. What are we gonna do? Uh, be brave. She's probably going to the tower. Let's follow her, but we have to be quiet. Right. That was too loud. Rapunzel and Carolina stepped forward following Dame Gothel, and then they realized they were already at the tower. They didn't recognize it before because it was covered in thorns. Ouch! Uh, who's there? Oh no, hide! Uh, I'm not jumping in there, it's prickly! Rapunzel, what are you doing here? Uh, Rapunzel, be brave. I'm here to save Edward, so let him go. Never! His brother is going to be crowned king, and then I'll get a seat at the royal council. You? Why? Because I'm the one who got rid of Edward. Duh. Now go away before I lock you up, too. Well, not on my watch, sister. Crafting Carolina tossed a giant net over Dame Gotham, trapping her. Awesome! Where'd you get that? I made it. Crafty. Hey, let me out! No way! Okay, we took care of Dame Gothel. Now we gotta save Edward. Uh, uh, how are we gonna get up there? Wait, I know! What's that? <laughs> Grappling hook! Oh. Never know when you're gonna have to scale a wall. <laughs> but we'll still get scratched up, won't we? Oh, well, I also brought scissors! Obviously. Can't crave without scissors. Here, take a pair. The two snipped away until the last of the thorny vines fell. Grappling time! All right, Rapunzel, scale that wall! But what about the window? It's all boarded up! Kick it! Uh, but I'll break it! That's the point! I've never broken anything on purpose before! Okay, here goes! Edward! Rapunzel? Edward! You changed your hair! Do you like it? <laughs> I love it! Oh, Edward! Rapunzel, my darling! My prince! Um, guys, super sweet reunion and all, but it's almost morning! We gotta go stop a wedding! Huh? Oh, right. Let's go! <laughs> Wait! What about me? Sorry, Gothel, shouldn't have been so mean. Rapunzel, Prince Edward, and Carolina rushed to the palace. Stop! 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 No! Stop! Edward, look! Edward? My son! Dad! Hi! I missed you! Sorry to interrupt a nice moment again, but we gotta stop this wedding! What? Stop the wedding! What did she say? Stop, stop the, the wedding. wedding! You're too late. I'm king now. No! Well, it stinks. 
tell me about it. After everything we've been through, first I was locked away in the tower, like my whole life. Then Dame Gothel kicks me out and I wander around lost in the woods for days. And then poor Edward gets locked away in the tower, scared and all alone. Finally, we heroically rescue him. But then bad guy Brad gets to be king anyway. It's not fair. What's this? Edward locked in a tower? Yeah, isn't that awful? Brad, Edward's own brother, plotted with evil Dame Gothel to lock him up in a tower so that he couldn't marry me. She is lying. Oh, no, I am not. And of course, Dame Gothel went along with it because she's just jealous and she's just playing mean. She is lying, I tell ya. Guards, arrest her. <laughs> not so fast. I'm still wearing the crown here, and I have some questions. Ugh, fine. Now, young lady, did I hear correctly? Did you say you were supposed to marry my son? Yes, sir. That was the plan, your majesty. And you rescued him from a tower? Yes, he was tied up and left all alone. So I climbed up and busted him out. I helped. <laughs> True. And Bradley, you knew Edward was locked in a tower this whole time? Daddy, I'm telling you, they're making this all up. I would never hurt my own brother. It was all that lady, Dame Gothel. And where is this Dame Gothel? We captured her in a big net. I made it out of yarn. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> well, I've heard enough. Guards, go get this Gothel and take Brad to his room. He's grounded indefinitely. Oh, that means forever. <laughs> No, I'm the king! I'm the king! And as for you... Yes? Thank you for rescuing my son. <laughs> You're very welcome. Do we get to be married now? <laughs> yeah, can we, Dad? Can we? Well, we were all set up for a party. What do you say, everyone? How about a royal wedding? Yay! <laughs> and are there no objections this time? Excuse me. So sorry to interrupt. Do you object to this union? No, sorry. Did you say Dame Gothel locked you in a tower? Yes, you know her? She's the worst, right? What's wrong? Rapunzel? Rapunzel? Yeah, who are you? I think those might be your real parents. No way. Are you serious? Mom? Dad? Rapunzel? Rapunzel. She has my eyes. She has my hair. Well, it used to be blonde and super long, but that's another story for another time. <laughs> well, this is turning out to be a very happy ending. Yeah, now let's have a wedding. Yay! <laughs> Sorry, I always cry at weddings. I, I can't help it. And so the two lovebirds were finally married and Rapunzel's long lost parents were there to celebrate with them. It was the happiest of days, just like a fairy tale, don't you think? Hi guys, Rapunzel here. It can be tough living in a tower all by your lonesome, but sometimes it's not so bad. So let's talk about the awesome and not so awesome stuff, aka the pros and cons of living in a tower all by yourself. It's awesome that you get all the cookies to yourself. <laughs> wow, well, there must be like a hundred cookies in here. <laughs> Hmm. The not so awesome thing is, there's no one here to stop telling you to eat a hundred cookies by yourself. Mm, I have a tummy ache. A not so awesome thing about living all by yourself alone in a tower is that you never have anyone to play games with. But the awesome thing about playing by yourself is you always win. <laughs> Checkmate! I win again! <laughs> I win again! <laughs> oh, congratulations, me! Good job, me! Oh, thanks, me! <laughs> you're so great, me! Oh, no, you're so great! <laughs> one super awesome thing about living alone in a tower all by yourself is there's no one there to tell you to clean your room. But the not so awesome part is there's no one to help you when you get stuck in a pile of your own stuff! Help! When you live all alone in a tower, there's no one there to tell you it's your bedtime. <laughs> awesome. But then again, there's no one there to tuck you in. <laughs> We're singing you a nice lullaby. We're doing under the bed monster check. <laughs> 
when you live alone, you can truly dance like no one's watching. But the not so awesome thing about that is when you finally pull off the sickest, most awesome dance move of all time, there's no one there to go, woohoo, go Rapunzel, go Rapunzel, it's your birthday, it's your birthday. And speaking of birthdays, can you imagine having to celebrate your birthday all by your lonesome? Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me. Saddest party ever. Actually, there's a ton of stuff that's hard to do by yourself, like brushing out tangles in the back of your hair, or scratching a hard to reach itch, or playing hide and seek. Ready or not, here I come. So there you have it, the pros and cons of living alone in a tower. It can be pretty fun hanging out solo and having some me time, but at the end of the day, it's also nice to have someone around to keep you company. You know, besides a wicked witch, like Dan Gossel. Ooh, I've always wondered what it would be like to live in a tower. Well, kids, there were a ton of questions about Rapunzel. I guess you could say she's a pretty popular chick. <laughs> Rebecca Charles asks, Miss Booksy, how long is Rapunzel's hair? That's a great question, and I bet it's really, 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 really long. Let's measure. <laughs> Rapunzel. Rapunzel! <laughs> I'm almost out of measuring tape, it's so long. Okay, Rapunzel's hair is coming in at five feet seven inches long. That's 67 inches or 170.18 centimeters. That's a boatload of centimeters. Good job, Rapunzel. Keep eating that healthy food and growing that hair. KC Puppy Cute says, hi, cool school. <laughs> I just want to ask Miss Booksy what she would do if she had long hair like Rapunzel. Well, the possibilities are endless. I could do lots of things. Use my hair to hang from tree branches, sleep on my hair, hide behind it if I'm scared. Wow, that question kind of made me want to grow my hair long like Rapunzel. What do you think, kids? What would you do if you had super long hair like her? Okay, more fairy tale questions coming up. Once upon a time, a young girl named Rapunzel was trapped in a tall tower by a mean old witch. The witch locked away Rapunzel for years and years so only she could ever visit her. And she had some very strange rules. The witch wouldn't let Rapunzel cut her hair. It grew and grew and nearly filled the tower. Rapunzel was very lonely. She twisted her hair into dolls to play with. She named them Harry and spelled it Harry. And Harriet spelled Harriet. She would sing from her tiny window to keep from getting bored. She had a beautiful voice. When the witch visited, she would call up, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Then Rapunzel would throw her hair out the window. The witch would climb up Rapunzel's hair like a rope. One day, a prince rode by and heard Rapunzel singing. Then the witch appeared and called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The prince saw her beautiful hair drop from the tiny window. He was shocked to see the witch climb up and go through the window. Then he waited to see who owned the beautiful voice and the beautiful hair. Finally, the witch climbed down and Rapunzel's face appeared in the window. <gasps> the prince fell in love. I have a plan, thought the prince. He waited patiently. Then, in his best witch voice, he called, Rapunzel, <clears throat> Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel appeared again. Did you forget something, she asked. The prince said, uh, uh, I just wanted to tell you something really cool. But Rapunzel had a sharp mind to match her beautiful voice and beautiful hair. This was no witch. She peeked out the window and saw the prince. The prince asked to meet her and Rapunzel allowed him to come up, but only after he rode to the store and got some snacks and cards and magazines. They played go fish and ate fruit snacks and laughed until they got tummy aches. Rapunzel was so happy. The prince convinced Rapunzel that she should escape. He had the perfect getaway plan. He said they'd have to cut off most of Rapunzel's hair. That was A-OK -okay with her. She was more than just her hair. Off they cut it. They tied it to the bedpost and climbed out of the tower down to the ground. They left the thick braid hanging and hid. The witch arrived. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, the witch cried. Let down your, oh, there it is. Up the witch climbed. With the witch in the tower, Rapunzel and the prince grabbed the braid, hopped on the prince's horse and yelled, go! Pulling the braid free and leaving the witch trapped forever. 
They rode far away. Rapunzel twisted the braid into handsome wigs, which she sold to women and bald men in the prince's kingdom. She saved up and opened her own salon. She called it Rapunzel's Tower. I hope you like super happy endings because Rapunzel and the prince got married and then had two children, Harriet and Harry, and they all lived happily ever after. By the way, Harriet and Harry both had great hair. <laughs> the end.